When we were building our bus, we couldn't wait to hit the road to see new landscapes. It feels like this magical world. And amazing locations. But honestly, one of the best parts about traveling is being able to meet up and become friends with so many people who are part-time or full-time travelers. This week, we're in Benson, Arizona. We had been parked in Benson for about a week at a Boondockers Welcome, and that's where we learned about the Escapees. Escapees, or SKPs, is a membership group with a few independent co-ops, like this one that we came to stay in this week. The group was created with a focus on RV community. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> and we couldn't believe how affordable it is to become a lifetime leaseholder here. We're like uh, having a family then just neighbors, it right? It absolutely is having a family. We're staying here for the week, so we thought we'd show you around. Now, we did join Escapees and became members, and we are guests here at the Saguaro Co-op. And one of the leaseholders has offered to give us a full tour of the park. Hi, my name is Les. Welcome to our park. Good to meet you guys. <laughs> it took me about five years to eventually get here. When I did, they had a special on $50 for a week-long hookup. We thought, oh my gosh, I spend 50 bucks and it'll just be a dump. It's the most beautiful park in the whole United States, I think. I like to take people down this row. It has everything that we have in the park. Behind you, Don, is an empty lot. On the left is a smallish casita. Especially notice the different colors, the landscaping, artwork on the walls, and of course, uh, yard art on this row. It's just beautiful. The large plot sizes make it easy to add a casita for leaseholders at the park. On our left is a stucco casita. Nancy, she's known as Songbird, and we have an, a band here in the park. One thing we've really loved as we've been around is the landscaping. We try very hard to make a desert appropriate plants. Each plant in here is uh, labeled by the landscape committee. The landscape committee keeps all of these little parks beautifully maintained. We've seen the landscaping committee in action, both in the communal grounds and individual lots. Now, Don has told me ever since I met him that he would like to live in a retirement home. And this isn't exactly a retirement home, but it, it kind of is a, a place where people retire. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> But don't you worry, we're not retiring yet. We're still going to be traveling. We just thought we really have to share this place because I didn't know this existed. And it's a really affordable way to live really well. The way the co-op is set up here is all these lots in this area are available as leaseholds. The leasehold lots, you put your name into the pool, you put down a $500 deposit, it's refundable at any time. And then if your number comes up and a spot is available, you can get a lifetime lease on one of the lots. The length of the leasehold is based on the life of you and your partner. And we were blown away to find the core cost for a lifetime lease is around $14,000. That's not what's special about this place. It's all about the community here. The office there is what I call the brains of the park. And the most important word I want you to see over there is co-op. We are a cooperative. Uh, we have 296 lifetime leasehold lots. And those lots, about 75% of the time, they're occupied as snowbirds. 25% of the people stay here all year round. We all volunteer to keep the park in good shape. We have five employees, three ladies in the office who are assisted with uh, volunteers, and we have two full-time maintenance men who are assisted by about 20 additional men and women on the utilities committee. We are 43 committees that keep the place running smoothly. We would need 40 to 50 employees if we didn't all volunteer to help out. Hi, hello, hello, hello. We have a really great map in the back there, and it shows us up-to-date information as far as who's in the park, as far as leaseholders or renters. And we can say right now we have 185 of our 301 leaseholder sites that are filled with leaseholders. Got 70 people renting as guests right Whoa. now. Yeah, so we're getting pretty full and only 40 spaces available right now. Now the one thing about the park, you're here and you're not just guests and renters. You are welcome to the park as though you belong here. Uh, right now there's 340 people on the hot list. 
uh, estimated about three years wait before you could get a, a, a lot. I think what intrigues me about this kind of co-op or my desire to <laughs> live in a retirement home, <laughs> there's this freedom I've always kind of felt when I've visited any kind of co-op commune because it's kind of isolated from the outside world, but there's a potential for really strong community. As we've walked around the park, everybody's been greeting us. Hi, I haven't seen you before. Welcome to the park. But we've also seen how the community all comes together and helps each other because we've bumped into people and they're like, yeah, I'm helping this guy. He's got to move out. So I'm helping him get his stuff out. And the first people that we heard about escapees from is Chris and Cherie of Technomadia. You may have seen them on our channel a long time ago because we were inspired by their GM bus. They are leaseholders here at this co-op, which they have talked about in a YouTube video before. And so we actually came and asked, can we stay in Chris and Cherie's spot? Because they're not here right now. They also have a boat in Florida and that's where they are. So this is Chris and Cherie's casita that we're staying at and you can ask for it too. Now, as fun as it is to have uh, Chris and Cherie's spot, we don't actually get to use the casita as guests or renters. That is theirs, the door stays locked so their stuff is safe inside of there. We just get the parking spot. But you do get to hang out on the deck and enjoy the views. This is Shirley's Casita, which is certainly the nicest one in the park, designed and built by an architect. Unfortunately, she's not here today, but she has told me we can look in the window. Is anybody allowed to do whatever they want with their casita? Yes, within certain limits. They're regulated by the city of Benson. We use their water, their sewer. We have an electric provider here. It can only be 12 feet high so mm -hmm. that the people up the hill still have their view. Welcome to my lot. My favorite part of my casita is this mirador, it's called. In Spanish, it means the lookout. Yeah, this is perfect, I think, to go on top of the casita because then you get the view of those gorgeous mountains, right? As the sun sets in the west, the sun reflects off the clouds onto the mountains, from which I coined the phrase, when the mountains turn pink, it's time to drink. <laughs> <laughs> they turn pink almost they, every night, oh, too, don't they? <laughs> yeah, we've loved walking around and just seeing all the individual you know, styles. Everybody's different and brought their personalities to it. You cannot sleep there overnight. They are zoned as storage sheds. And my taxes are $92 a year because it's a storage shed as opposed to a resident. When we bought this one, it hadn't been changed since the day it got built. We did paint it and put new floor down. I'm a sewer, as you can mm -hmm. see. <laughs> um, I made a career of making quilts and quilting them for people for 22 years. And, and then they get cut up and then they look like that. Where were you based there? In Minnesota. This was a, a place to come to get out of the cold winters? Yes. Yes, we were invited down by friends and she kept, come down and see us, come down and see us. And so then we eventually came and visited for a week and kind of basically never left. <laughs> We've been here eight years now in August. This is my portion. And this is my husband, Roger, and he makes toys. I made this one for my granddaughter. She was a fireman in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. And have you been woodworker? Uh, most for of about life? the last 12 years. Okay. Since I retired, I was a truck driver. Boy, these are really detailed. I'm gonna try making some of these pull toys for, for the very little kids. Mm -hmm. I give a lot of my toys to the uh, foster kids here in Benson. It's a lot of fun. I can spend a lot of time out here. Yeah. Pretty much do what you want. There's one down on about the second row up that we all call the outhouse lot. And I tease him all the time, what do you have in there? And I said, do you have a snow blower and a lawnmower? He, he just says, I'm not telling you. But we love it here. Um, weather couldn't be better. You're right. <laughs> We're at 3,700 feet above sea level. So the summers are mild. They are, they're hot, but uh, we have what I say is five days that go over 100 degrees. We have five days in the winter that go below freezing. The lowest I've ever seen is 26 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, we don't have to winterize the campers because it's just a, a quick overnight drop in temperature. It's not uh, a hard freeze. But uh, 
we're about uh, eight degrees cooler than Tucson, about 15 degrees cooler in the summer than, than is Phoenix. Welcome to Tom and Becky's lot and casita. Well, we've been coming here since uh, 2007, and we got a, a lot in 2012. It took us about five years to get in the park, and that's uh, about what you could figure. Look back and think, boy, when were we ever gonna get in? And then we were lucky we didn't know what we had till we got here because all we had was some pictures on the internet when we got here in the fall. We thought, well, this looks pretty good, so <laughs> it turned out good. We're from Worcester, Ohio. Okay. We spend more time here than we do in Ohio anymore. Mm -hmm. We come out here usually late September, early October, and then we're here till sometime in May. There's actually three levels on this. Oh, wow. We've got the, this level, the bottom, and then the whole underside under the rest of the casita is open for storage. Then there's this porch level. That level is with the main part of the casita. And then there's an upper level. This saguaro, we got the lot was about right here. It has been growing in recently about a foot a year. Yeah, you've got a wonderful view. Yeah, we do. Oh boy, this is Please. very cozy. Yeah. What do you think about this space? It's beautiful. <laughs> I love it. I love all your little creative yeah. touches too, Hugh. Yeah, those are things that we've packed up. Becky especially, she'll see something that's unique or different that she really likes. And this is a Murphy bed. This oh, pulls yes. out. Mm -hmm. This is a table that comes down and this becomes the leg to support it. So that was that that all that was here. If it is really hot and you want to stay, you know, be in some shade, or if it was rainy, which you don't worry about rain out here much, but it's nice to come out here. And... Thank you so much. Oh, oh you're beautiful. More than welcome. Oh. Skip hug. Skip hug for sure. <laughs> We have no residents in the park under 21 years of age. The co-op is listed as an over 55 yes. park. Uh, because of age discrimination laws, we are not allowed to discriminate and hardwire the whole park over 55. We have to allow under 55s uh, in 20%. The area on our left is the so-called boondocking area, $5 a night for dry camping. We have almost never filled the park up where we can't have renters have a space. On our right is the sculpture garden. Behind it is the labyrinth. And uh, we have a resident artist, Jerry, and she designed all this and all the volunteers helped build it. It is a beautiful area to come and just relax. Behind you, is our so-called plant orphanage. The landscape committee plants, plants, and raises them up to adoption age, and then you're able to adopt them and take them home with you. Our resident artist in the park, famous for designing things like this mural, and the mural uh, was looks like it's done by one artist. It was done by 24 different people on a paint by number scheme that Jerry developed. This is one of the most exciting parts of the park right here. This is called an RV dump site. <laughs> <laughs> now one thing that I was really excited about is seeing the shop. Uh, this shop is for you guys to use and also right behind you is a clipboard that you can sign tools out, take them to your lot and work on your rig and this is all for you guys. So whether you're a leaseholder or a guest you're welcome to use this room. Very much so. Well, we have avoided calling you guys jars. You are not <laughs> just a renter. You are our guests here. You are participants in the park and everything here you're entitled to do. Which got me thinking, if we need to do some repairs or if we to install anything else in the next month or two, maybe we'll come back here, utilize all the materials and tools in the shop. Uh, we have assortments of nails, bolts, nuts and bolts, screws, everything. Help yourself. 
If you have some you need to leave behind to lighten your load, you're welcome to. Room two is completely jam full of costumes for Halloween, oh, nice. for skits. This room, number three, just brings a tear to my eye. It's full of wheelchairs, walkers, crutches, canes, etc. A committee called the Helping Hands runs this room. And uh, I need to tell you about Helping Hands. And Don, I'm gonna pick on you. If you were to break your ankle, the first thing that would happen in the park is they'd go to Mella and say, uh, you don't know where the hospital is, we'll take you there. Uh, we will cat sit your cats. They will provide him, of course, with crutches, etc. And then in addition to that, they will take care of you. They'll bring you food, they'll take care of your animals, they'll do anything you need for short term, not like care in Livingston. And uh, they're wonderful people and they do it very discreetly, no gossip. It's more like uh, having a family than just neighbors, it right? It absolutely is having a family. I came here, I wasn't needy, but I have been adopted by this place and I just fell in love. I did have one other question though. Yes, please. Now, is the rumor true? Are you are you a newlywed as well? I am. I've been married uh, 15 days. Congratulations. To the love of my life. Aww. She's changed uh, my entire outlook on life and made me the happiest man in the world. Well, congratulations. Thank you. As I said earlier, we only have uh, five full-time employees. We do bring our own trash up here. The caramel colored and blue uh, trailer is for recycling cardboard and of course the trash and down here at the end is a trailer full of aluminum cans that we recycle. I am the chairman of the Founders Park Committee. I have about 20 members in my committee that we uh, keep the park spick and span, empty the trash, order the porta potty to be pumped out and uh, just generally maintain the park in fine order. We have happy hour here every afternoon at 4 p.m. You do not have to bring an alcoholic drink. You can bring anything and just fellowship. It's a great way to meet the people here in the park. On Thursday night, we have a uh, large bonfire here and uh, people bring hot dogs and marshmallows to roast. Only reason we don't have a fire is if too much wind. We have uh, several charcoal grills here. The park does provide the propane and you're welcome to come use these uh, charcoal grills anytime you like. As we turn over here, I'll show you our wood-fired pizza oven. Uh, we enjoy making pizzas in there. As you can see by the sign up here, this is the best little hoe house in Benson. <laughs> this is the Landscape Committee's headquarters. The park is a blacksmith, and this is his uh, bailiwick. He loves to teach blacksmithing, and he would be delighted to uh, spend time teaching how to smith. You want to learn how to blacksmith? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> On our right, you can see this is our storage lot. We encourage each leaseholder to bring his rig over here when he or she is gone from the park so that we can rent their lot. The money goes into a uh, rental pool so, and it is uh, used to help eliminate your m and maintenance and operating fees. Uh, I call them condo fees just for short. We have actually arrived here on a very special weekend. Every year the Squirrel Club has a giant garage sale <laughs> and everybody is so excited. <laughs> yeah. The three storage containers that you see on our left are uh, completely filled up during the year. We hold a yard sale. Prices are dirt cheap, but we still raise about $6,000 every year. That money goes into a fund to uh, pay for entertainment in the clubhouse. We're hopeful that we're gonna get some outdoor camping chairs. Maybe an outdoor table. Maybe a whole outdoor living room. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> we spent a lot of time working on the inside. We didn't do anything about the outside. And we've really been wanting some camping chairs. So cross fingers, hold thumbs. Uh, it's a chair. Oh, hey. good. I'm gonna grab my treasure before I get oh, to no. it. Oh no! Find some more treasures. <laughs> Alaska. But you haven't been there yet. Can you get the T-shirt no. if you haven't been you there? You can't yet? get the shirt if you haven't been there. <laughs> How do you like it? We scored. Best two-dollar chair I've ever gotten. 
Wait, this is our extra bonus find. <laughs> we weren't looking for it, but we wanted it. <laughs> I think you gotta go like long and straight. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Here, let me try. Watch out! <laughs> That's not doing anything. <laughs> what are we doing wrong? <laughs> I think I'm getting somewhere. Yep, I think so. I'm getting to the <laughs> <laughs> We have two other major events in the clubhouse. One is called the Christmas Auction, and I'll be showing you some things later uh, that the people donate for the Christmas Auction. We're going off road. And... Oh, okay. <laughs> this is our dog park, and it's a very popular place to meet other people. <laughs> Hi, how are you folks doing? Good, how are you Rick? Nice to meet not you. Not too bad, not too bad. Beautiful day. Yes. yes. One of your arms is going to go bigger than the other by waving at everybody as you go by. <laughs> Our sense of humor in the park is just amazing to me. Example, there's no fishing from the bridge here. <laughs> The row on our left is called the 300 row. It is short-term leases of six months or one year. You may sign up for a waiting list at, on the 300 and 700 row with no cost to you. And when you get to be the lowest number that, on that list, they call you and offer you a six month or annual lease. This is an arch built by a couple here in the park. There is no glue, no rebar, nothing of that. It's all balanced. And uh, they auction these off at the Christmas auction. Those sometimes bring four and five hundred dollars. This is Dennis, our lead maintenance man. Uh, television, uh, electrical, everything pretty much whenever there's a problem in the park. Thank you. That's on me. <laughs> <laughs> Behind you, Don, is the residence of the man and woman who build the arches. They work sometimes in South Dakota at an elk resort and that elk arch is uh, something they made. Hey Ed, how are you? I enjoy giving tours of this park so much. I love the people here and I love the park. And this is just a delight to get to take you guys around for a tour. Now the clubhouse here is kind of like the heart of the social networking. Welcome! Welcome. <laughs> Go and so enjoy some music. They have jam sessions. Jam sessions. Oh really? They got a stage where they put on concerts. They have jam sessions weekly. There's pool tables and a pool room. A puzzle room, a sewing, knitting, quilting area. This is our library. If you find a book in here that you absolutely have to have, take it. If you have some books that you need to offload, please leave them behind. Up here we have photographs from the photography club. One lady makes these beautiful gourds and uh, she puts those in the auction and they bring several hundred dollars usually. And even have poker turnouts. Uh, say hello Lynn, you're on YouTube. Oh hi, how are you? The room on our right as we come in here I have no idea what it's for, so you can use your imagination. Over here we have a table we call the Neiman Marcus table. Uh, if you have something that you don't use anymore, you can provide it here and people can come along and pick it up. Here's a cat bowl if you need one. This doesn't look particularly impressive, but it's a donation area for the Benson Food Bank. And they support approximately 300 families. Now raised $27,000 this year. Mm -hmm and we brought in two and a half tons of food. We'll be going for walks every morning and we noticed this donation box. We thought we'd contribute. We are the largest philanthropists in Cochise County. They've got a full commercial kitchen. We prepare dinners on Monday night. That's the only event we charge for $7, but the food is delicious. As you can see, we're having uh, popcorn for the jam today. Thank you. 
How do you get on the cupcake committee? Oh, oh. <laughs> This lovely lady had her 100th birthday party uh, oh, okay. last week. Just starting backwards now, I understand. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't know if I should go up or should go down. Maybe I'll be 99 next year. <laughs> Next year. <laughs> now we've been doing all of our laundry at laundromats as we travel and we end up spending at least five dollars for one load to wash and dry whereas here it's about two dollars to wash and dry and one of my favorite things daily four o'clock happy hour <laughs> Everything I've shown you is not important. The huge lots, the beautiful landscaping, the beautiful clubhouse, the, the wonderful uh, facilities we have here, none of that's important. What's important is the heart of the people here. We are one huge family and we love one another. Great, what a good time. Now don't be upset, we're not settling down. We still got a lot of traveling to do. <laughs> we do. <laughs> it's just good to know, I think, that you don't need to stay in a sticks and bricks house to live well. We would like any of you watching this video to consider joining our hot list. If you're an Escapees member or you've been to any of the co-ops, please comment below, recommend ones to us. And if this is some place you'd like to come stay at, please let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I'd like to tell everybody that uh, you should go visit Florida. They have 12 things that we do not have. They have cockroaches, <laughs> they have alligators, mosquitoes, no see ticks, fleas, and moss and mold, and we don't have any of that here. <laughs>